When we have this grace of God, we speak to us with the grace of God all the time. Now the Bible has both the word of grace, word of love, and also word of the law. That we want to apply to ourselves. But in our daily life, we also apply it. I have done a lot of marriage counseling and relational counseling and spiritual life counseling. And I found that in many marriages, they very often say words that hurt each other. Na katika ushauri na sawa jamii ama wa kifamilia asawa iona watu wakilaumiana kwa ajili ya kuumizana katika ndoa Or even for Christian leaders and pastors sometimes we use the law too much to teach the people uh, Na katika maisha ya kawaida ya uh, kanisa ya wachungaji na viongozi wanatumia sheria za kimwili kuwafundisha watu sana and here I want to talk about how to use grace and the law in to ourselves and in teaching and in communication. Now how to So every day we Talk to ourselves with the grace of God. God loves me. God has a wonderful plan in my life. So that we know that we are precious in the sight of God. So we have motivation to live out the plan of God. And then when we encourage people, how can we encourage people with the grace and the law of God? Na tunawatia watu moyo ili waweze kukua katika upendo na katika sheria za Mungu. For instance, I'm going to give you some examples. Anataka kutupa mifano. If I want to encourage people to pray, kama anatatia watu moyo kuomba. Now for some people when they encourage people to pray they will just use the law. Na wakati mwingine watu wakipeana neema wakipeana watu moyo jinsi ya kuomba wanapeana kwa sheria. They will say if you don't pray what can you get from God? Na watasema kwamba ati usipoomba hautapata chochote kwa Mungu. Or they may say you don't pray so you don't you know your life is not blessed. Ah bana watakwambia kwamba hauombi ndio sababu maisha yako hayajabarikiwa. Or God doesn't like you because you don't pray much. These are words of accusation. How can we encourage people to pray? First we use the grace of God. Let me use this example. God loves us all. Mungu anatupenda sisi wote. He has a wonderful plan for each one of us. Ana mpango mzuri wa kila mmoja. He want to bless each person. Anataka kubariki kila mmoja. He want to great do great things in our life. Anataka kubariki maisha yetu kila saa kila wakati. Okay. Now, did you uh, say record? Does it say record, right? Nangesema. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, now, so, Sasa. so God has all these blessings prepared for us. And then when we love God and obey God, God and pray to Him, his, He'll pour His blessings into our lives. 
Yeye anamwagilia hizo baraka katika maisha yetu. So anytime we repent and pray to him, God is very happy. Wakati kila saa tunaenda kutubu mbele zake tunatubu tunadugu, Mungu anakuwa na furaha kwa sababu tumetubu. And when you have a sincere heart to follow God's will, God will make it come true in our lives. Na tukiwa na mioyo iliyo wazi mbele ya Mungu, Mungu anakuja ndani maisha yetu na anakuwa Mungu wa haki kabisa. To use myself as an example. Anatumia maisha yake kama mfano. When I experienced the Holy Spirit in 1998. Wakati aliona mwanzo wa roho katika mwaka wa 1998. When the evangelist laid hands on me and I experienced a great love of God. Wakati mwingilisa aliweka mkono juu yake na akaona nguvu za roho juu yake. And any time I pray to him I can experience his love and power and wa- joy. Wakati kila saa anaomba anahubiri anaweza kuhisi uwepo wa Mungu na kujihisi kwamba I said this is really wonderful. And I said to and and also when I pray for people, people experience the the work of God. So I I said God, this is really wonderful. I want to be able to bless more people. Anataka kubariki watu wengi zaidi. Lord please open the way for me. Mungu fungua njia yangu. But at that time God did not open the way yet. Mungu hajafungua njia zote kikamili sasa. God has a t- given me a 10 years of training. Mungu ana muda ama sehemu yake ya kuwa 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 train watu. So I learned to take care of problems in my life. E, Mungu anashughulika na shida za maisha yangu. And then after the 10 years, baada ya miaka ile kumi, God set me free. Mungu akamweka huru. And he opened a way that I can go to different countries to bless people. Na akamfungua atoke katika nchi yake yani nchi nchi mbalimbali abariki watu. So when God saw that my heart is to bless people, Mungu alipoona moyo wake ni wa kubariki watu. God is very happy. Mungu amefurahia. He is more than willing to fulfill that yeye anaenda kutimiliza ile ombi aliyolitengeneza. So he has a wonderful plan in eternity. Mungu ana mpango mzuri mpaka hatima yake. He knew, he know, he knows our heart. Anajua mioyo yetu. And when you really have a heart a sincere heart to love God. Kwamba tuna moyo mweupe ulio wazi wa kupenda Mungu. God knows your heart. Mungu anajua mioyo yetu. And he has something wonderful planned for each one of you. Na kila mpango maalum wa kila mmoja. And when we pray to him and really love God, wakati tunaomba kwake na tunampenda, and he will make it come true to us. Na yeye atafanya haya mambo ya kuwa ya ukweli kwetu sisi. So when we pray we have full confidence. Wakati tunaomba tuna ile imani ya kutosha. So I hope each one of you have the full confidence. Najua kwamba ninyi nyote muna ujasiri wa kutosha. Don't think that when you pray God will close his ears to you. Ah ah, usifikirie ukiomba Mungu pengine atafanya jambo lingine tofauti la kushangaza kwako. But he has such a wonderful plan for your life that you Your eyes have not seen your ears have not heard. Mungu amekupangia mambo mazuri ambayo macho yako hayajaona wala masikio yako hayajawahi kusikia. So when you have this sincere heart and pray to God. Ukiwa na moyo wa wazi na uweze kuomba kwa Mungu kila saa. God is very happy to respond to your prayer. Mungu anakuwa na furaha zaidi ili vile anavyojibu maombi yako. And bless you with a wonderful plan that you never dream of. Anakubariki na maisha yaliyo ya ajabu ambayo wewe mwenyewe hata hujawahi kuona. So this is how I motivate people to pray. Hii ndio ningependa kukutia moyo kuomba. I will say, you know, God has a wonderful plan in eternity. Naweza kusema kwamba Mungu ana mpango mzuri katika hatima yako. If we just have a sincere heart, I want God's will to be done. Ukiwa na moyo ulio wazi ambao utapokea mapenzi ya Mungu yatimizwe. I want to do things in God's way. Ukifanya vitu katika mapenzi ya Mungu. God will be very happy with your hearts. Mungu atakuwa na furaha na atakufurahishwa na 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 And for sure God will make it happen in your life. Mungu atayafanya mambo haya yatendeke kwa maisha yako. Let me ask you. Wacha nikuulize. 
Do you want to enter God's wonderful plan? Wewe, unataka kuingia katika mpango mzuri wa Mungu? Do you want to be used by God greatly? Unataka kutumikiwa na Mungu kila siku? Now if you want to be used by God greatly, na Mungu vizuri na kwa sana. So every day you believe there's a wonderful plan of God in heaven. Kila siku unaamini kuna mpango mzuri sana wa Mungu kwa ajili yako. If I come to God with repentance, ninapokuja kwa Mungu katika njia ya toba, and really dedicate my life to God, na chukua maisha yangu yote nikiweka kwa Mungu, and take care of my sins, na niweze kujitukutuku ndani zangu, and pray to God and God is very excited and very happy to bless you and when you just come to God and enjoy him oh hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Lord we love you Mungu tukupenda. We worship you. Tuakuabudu. We adore you. Tuakuabudu. We need you. Tuakuheshimu. I want your will done. Tunataka mapenzi yakati. Your will be done. Wewe matepenzi yako. Your will be done. Use the heaven. Kama hivyo mbinguni. Use my life vitally. Tumia maisha yangu vile unavyotaka. Change my life. Badilisha maisha yangu. Raise me up to a higher level. Ninue kwa kiwango kingine. When you pray like this. Ukiomba hivyo God will look at you smiling. He'll be very happy with you. He is very happy to make this come true in your life. If more people in Kenya really want to follow God's will, Watu wote katika nchi ya Kenya wakifuata mapenzi ya Mungu. Your life will be changed. Maisha yako yatabadilishwa. Your life will be blessed. Maisha yako yatabarikiwa. And you can do greater and greater things for God. Na unaweza kufanya mambo makubwa ya ajabu ya Mungu. Kenya will also be revived and also everything will go better. Kenya yetu itavuvuliwa na kila kitu kitaenda kwa mapenzi ya Mungu na kwa uzuri. Do you believe that God has such a wonderful plan in our life? Unaamini hiyo Mungu ana mpango mzuri kwa maisha yako? Amen. So do you want this to come true? Unataka haya yakuwe hakika? And you know for that to come true? Hii ili kwamba yakuwe hakika. We repent. Tulazima tuombe na tuombe sana. And obey God. Na tuweze kumtii Mungu. And love God. Na tupende Mungu. And serve God. Na tuuzisi. And God will be very happy. Na Mungu atafurahi sana. Now this is how I motivate you to enter God's wonderful plan. Hivi ndivyo ninapokutia moyo kuingia katika mpango wa Mungu. I used the grace and a wonderful plan of God. Natumia neema katika mpango mzuri wa Mungu. To motivate you to change. Kukutia moyo kubadilike. Let me tell you. Wacha nikwambie. The greatest motivation comes from love. Ukutia moyo mkuu unatokana na upendo. Have you seen people fall in love? Ulishawaiona watu wakiingia katika kupendana kwa ajabu kule. Or some of you fell in love before. Ama hapa kuna watu ambao wamependana kabla ya mkutano huu. And then when you fell in love you always think about their person, right? Ah, unapopenda mtu unaanza kumfikiria kila saa, unamfikiria kila saa. You always want to do something for their person. Unataka kufanyia huyo mtu kitu kizuri kila saa jamani ningemfanyia kitu kizuri. This is the picture of me and my wife. In all my cell phones, I have my the picture of my wife and me. Iyo ni picha yake na mke wake na katika kila ujumbe ambao anatuma inakuanga yake na mke wake. And in, in my wallet too, I always have her picture. And na katika kila sehemu yote mahali anaweka hata katika kibeti yake anaweka picha ya mke wake. I want to keep ourselves in a eternal romantic relationship. Yeye anataka uwe kujiweka yeye na mke wake katika ile maisha ya upendo upendo halisi wa kuendelea sio upendo kufa ule. So this is our picture here. Hiyo ni picha yake ndio ile bebegu wa waleti yake. I never want to do anything to hurt her. I always want to make her happy. Because if she is happy, then I'm happy. So if she is happy, then I'm happy. If my wife is happy, she will do everything for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
nzuri kwa ajili yake. Let me tell you in a day we communicate with each other many times. Eh, wacha nikwambie kila wakati mimi huzungumza na yeye kila saa hata nikiwa mbali. We talk on the phone and send messages. Jawe, tunazungumza kwa simu, ananitumia ujumbe. When people are in love they're willing to do many things for the for the spouse. Watu wakiwa katika mapenzi wako na shauku ya kufanya jambo mzuri kila wakati kwa wenzao. But it happens that when many people get married na ina 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 kwamba ili watu wakiwa wameoana katika ndoa they start to use the law on each other. Wanaanza kutumia sheria kwa mwingine to motivate ili wampatie moyo. They will say you didn't wash the dishes. You have to do the garbage. You don't listen to me. You don't give money to me. Now, have you noticed that in many marriages, when they are in a romantic relationship, they wanted to do anything for their person. But it's sadly after marriage, many times, very often they lose the love. And then when they talk to each other, it's always say you didn't do this, you didn't do that. You have to do this, you have to do that. They say you make me unhappy. They try to motivate the other person to change by telling them what is wrong with them. Let me ask you, when a relationship is like that, do they have the motivation to really love each other and care for each other? No, it's happening. Then they have to do it. They feel they have to do it. But actually in the heart they don't like to do it. But if they're always nice to each other. Let me tell you, my wife has done so many good things to me. She always thinks of ways to make me happy. And I always also try to make her happy. In a day I would say to her many times, I like you, I love you. But Sometimes when I have time, I ask her, do you have time tonight? When she hears that, she'll be very happy and smiling. She will say, what do you have in mind? I always ask her, do you have time to go out for a walk tonight? And then she will tell me for the whole day. Do you know why I'm very happy today? For the whole day. And then I told her, you know, I don't know why I'm very happy today. Because I asked you to go out tonight. 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 So you are happy for the whole day. I want to express my love. And then my wife will express her joy. That makes our relationship very enjoyable. Because other than God, she is the most important person in my life. Right? Is it true? Other than God, your spouse is the most important person in your life. 
Mungu yule mke wako yule mume wako ndiye mtu wa karibu ambaye unataka wewe upendo juu yake sana. So I want her to be happy all the time. Nataka akuwe na furaha kila wakati. And then when she is happy, wakati yako na raha We are willing to serve and help each other all the time. Sasa tuko sasa na ile ile moyo wa ndani wa kutumika pamoja katika huduma ya Mungu. I don't have to tell her what to do. Na usitaje kumwambia cha kufanya. She is more than happy to do it. Yeye anajua na anafurahi ana kulifanya ile jambo hata kabla sijamwambia. And I'm very happy to do anything to make her happy. Na hata mimi ninafurahi kufanya jambo lolote kwa ajili yake kumfanya awe na raha. Let me ask you. Acha nikuulize. Is your marriage like that? Wewe ndoa yako iko na una hiyo? What did you say? You say it's just by the grace. Yeah. <laughs> Now, is it true that many marriages have too much law and not much love? Aha, ni ukweli kwamba ndoa nyingi zetu ziko na maswali mingi kuliko upendo mingi. So people don't have much motivation to bless each other and love each other. Yaani watu hawana ile moyo wa kubarikiana sana wala ile moyo wa kutafuta sheria mahali pa kuweka. So I'm using this as an illustration. Nimetumia hii kama mfano. In a marriage when there is a lot of love and caring and joy, yaani katika ndoa kama kuna upendo mingi, kuna furaha, mambo yote And then when they understand what to do then they will be motivated to do it. Na watu wakielewa lile wanastahili kufanya watatiwa moyo kulifanya kwa uzuri sana. Let me say this. What does it mean? The motivation comes from love. Kutiwa moyo kutoka katika upendo. And the law tells us what to do. Na Mungu atakwambia cha kufanya. The law is not the main motivation. Yaani sheria sio ile kitu ya kutia watu moyo. The main motivation is the love. Ile 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 kitu ya kutia moyo ni upendo. It's the same for marriage and the same for relationship with God. Hiyo ndio katika ndoa na hiyo ndio katika uhusiano wetu na Mungu. When we know God is such a wonderful plan in in my life, tukijua kwamba Mungu ana ile mpango mzuri mkubwa kwa maisha yangu. That gives me the motivation to obey him. Ile inanitia moyo wa kumtii. I know that when I pray to him and obey him, na tukijua kwamba nikiomba na kumtii, he will bless my whole life. Yeye atabariki maisha yangu yote. And my life will go higher and higher. Na maisha yangu yatainuka na yatainuka sana. And I won't regret. Na mimi Then I will also enjoy serving God. Nitakuwa na kujisikia jinsi ninavyohudumu katika Bwana. You know life here is difficult. Hapa maisha ni magumu wapendwa. I know it's you know uh, you know for you you say I have no choice. Ah uh, wewe mara nyingi usema hauna jawabu lingine. But I have a choice. Lakini mimi nina jawabu. I want to say life in Hong Kong is much easier but much Enjoyable. Yani oh, don't, don't worry. Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. Okay. But why do I choose to come? Kwa nini nimeamua kukuja? Is it because I like the toilets here? ni kwamba tunajua na napenda hizi vyo zenu hizi kuni nimeamua kuja I come here because I'm more motivated by the love of God nimekuja hapa kwa sabi nimetiwa moyo na upendo wa mungu I know that everyone needs the love of God najua kwamba kila moja anaitaji mapensi ya mungu I know that the message from God can change your life najua ujube wa mungu ni kubadilisha maisha yetu Then you can enjoy God. Tunaweza kufurahi ndani ya Bwana. And your spiritual life will be different. Na maisha yako ya kiroho yatakuwa tofauti. And what I do for you? Kile nacho na kunakufanyia wewe. God is very happy with me. Mungu anafurahia kwangu mimi. And I will enjoy life more. Na mimi nafurahi kwa maisha yangu. And he will remember everything I do for him. Na atakumbuka yale mambo nafanya kwa niaba yake. And actually let me tell you. Wasanikwambie kwa ukweli. 
God has given his heart to me. Mungu amenipa moyo wake mimi. When I live in his love so much. Ninapoishi kwa upendo wake sana. I find that my heart become like you know I'm not being proud. I my heart is like the heart of God. Naona nikana kwamba moyo wangu na maisha yangu na naona ni kama ni moyo wa Mungu. When I see you I care about you. Ninapokuangalia naona nikana kwamba nikushughulikie kila saa. I want to do something to bless you. Nataka nifanye kitu nikubariki. When I see people bless I'm happy. Nikiona watu wamebarikiwa hivyo ni furaha yangu. So that is my motivation. Mimi najua Mungu ndiye anayenipa ile ile moja wa kufanya kazi. From the love of God. Kutoka katika upendo wa Mungu. And I want to go to different countries. Nataka serve God. Nataka niende katika nchi mbalimbali nitumike kwa Mungu. And I enjoy doing it. Na na furahi na kufanya hivyo. Even though the process might be difficult. Ili hata kama njia zinaweza kuwa ngumu za kufanya hivyo. Okay, now I'm going to give the illustration of just now I gave the illustration of how to motivate people to pray and to obey God. Nataka nipatiane mfano huu tena jinsi ya watu wanastahili kuomba na kumtii Mungu. Now here I give the motivation to people to read the Bible. Hapa nimewatia watu moyo wasome Biblia. Now some people will motivate people to read the Bible they would say it like this. Watu wakitia watu wakatia watu moyo kusoma Biblia kusema namna hii. They will say you have to read the Bible. Nasema lazima usome Biblia. If you don't read the Bible, usikusoma Biblia. How can you serve God? Utatumikaje kwa Mungu? You don't read the Bible, usikusoma Biblia. You have no strength. Hauna nguvu. This is all from the law. Hii yote inatoka kwa sheria. But I will tell people. Lakini nataka niambie watu. God has treasure for us. Treasures, a lot of treasures for us. Mungu ana hazina kubwa kwa ajili yetu. Hazina mingi. It's all written in the Bible. Yote imeandikwa katika Biblia. The Bible contains many many precious promises. Biblia imebeba ahadi nyingi sana zinazotoka kwa Mungu kukuingia kwa mwanadamu. For instance, his promise. Yeye akisema ahadi zake that what God has prepared for those who love him. Yeye ambaye ametengenezea kwa wale wanaompenda are things that eyes have not seen ears have not heard and the heart is not thought of so God has such wonderful things planned for each one of us he has so many wonderful blessings if we love him Sisi tukimpenda. We will see things unbelievable in our life. <laughs> Tutaona vitu ambavyo wengine hawataamini kwa maisha yetu. So do you want to know these promises? Nataka kuona hizi ahadi za Mungu. Let me tell you some examples of how God blessed me. Wacha akwambie jinsi Mungu alivyombariki. One time I came to Africa to another country and I had to change a plane. E, wakati mmoja alikuja katika nchi ya Afrika akatamani kubadilisha India kubadilisha e, ndege and I miscalculated the time miscalculated the time na wakati hakushika mzuri saa saa sa, hai, haikushika saa mzuri ya kuendelea kuondoka and I closed my eyes to rest I, actually I did not fall asleep aha akafunga macho yake ili andani lakini mkweli hakudada and then I missed the plane. Aha, alafu ndege ikamwacha. And then when I found it now I went to the counter and asked the person. Alienda kwa 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 meza akauliza yule ambaye anahusika. She said, "Well, the plane has left. You have to go to the rebooking counter to rebook your ticket." Ah, ndege ishaenda lazima uende mahali wanachukulianga ticket tena uchukue ticket upya. So I went to rebooking counter uh, the woman said i because i i booked the ticket in hong kong i have to call hong kong to find trying to fix this when I called Hong Kong, the person said, "Well, this is very difficult." And then I pray to God. When I pray, I always say, "Lord, I know that you are Almighty." Awalipo hamba alimambia, "E mungu nchuo uwe uwe ni muweza wa biyoto." 
You can do anything. Lord, please make it possible. Oh, And then I went to the woman. And I said, can you make a phone call and find out what I can do? Is there anything else I can do? When she made a phone call, her eyes and mouth were wide open. And she said, the plane has come back. <laughs> So, when the plane came back, I asked the people, what happened? One person said, the plane just could not take off. So it came back. So without me, God can make the plane. Uh, in my life, I have many experiences. Because God knows I have a pure heart. And you can have this pure heart too. The pure heart doesn't mean you're perfect. I'm not perfect. But I try to follow God's will as much as I can. My heart is like this. I want to be perfect. My heart is like this. My heart is like this. God is wonderful. God is full of love. He wants to bless all people. And He has a wonderful plan in my life. If I follow His plan, my whole life will be blessed. And many people will be blessed. So I want to put down my sin. Put down my selfish desires. Put down my lust. And trust to God. Whenever any simple thought comes, immediately I pray for strength. And take care of their sin. So what I do is I just try to follow God as much as I can. And I really learned to hate sin. And I hate disobedience to God in any way. I'm not saying I'm perfect. But any moment any sinful thought comes up, I'll pray and take care of it right away. I want to say you can do the same thing. I'm not asking you to be perfect. We, we just really put God in the first place in our life. And we repent of our sins. And say no to our sins. And we really follow God. And then God will be very happy. Then you can enter the wonderful plan of God. The motivation comes from the love of God. He has so many blessings. And when we follow Him, these blessings will come. And when we read the Bible, we will know these promises of God. Then I know that this is, you know, the, the word of the Lord is the lamb in front of my feet. His word is the light to my path. If I follow him, I know that my way will be always beautiful and wonderful. So this is how more way people read the Bible. To find more about God. Now, if I want to make people like that, do you have a strong motivation to read the Bible? And to pray? And also to serve God? How do I motivate people to serve God? 
You know, God wants to find people who can bless other people. Mungu anatafuta watu ambao wanaweza kubariki wenzao. God is looking for people with a pure heart to bless people. Mungu anatafuta watu walio na moyo ulio wazi ili wabariki wenzao. And when he sees someone with with a pure heart to bless people, anapona mtu ambaye ako na moyo ulio mweupe wa kubariki wenzao. He will provide for you so you have money to help other people. Yeye atakubariki na fedha ili wewe ubariki wengine. He will give you spiritual gifts so you can help other people. Atakupa kipawa cha kiroho ili na wewe ubariki tena wengine na kipawa. He will give you opportunities so you can bless other people. Atakupa tia nafasi ili ubariki wengine. And he will remember everything we have done for him. Atakumbuka yale mambo yote umemtendea. And he will remember even a small thing and he will reward us. Atakumbuka hata kile kidogo umefanyia wenzako. And our life will go higher and higher. Maisha yetu yatapanda juu na juu zaidi. When you hear this, you have the motivation to serve God. Jamani ukisikia hii si unaotiwa moyo kufanya kazi ya Mungu. You know, I came from a very poor family. Yeye alitoka katika jamii iliyo maskini sana. In, when I was young, because my father gambled a lot. Wakati yeye alikuwa mdogo, I had to eat rice with mold on it. We wash away the mold and then eat it. Yani alikuwa ni mtu wa kukula mchele ambao mara nyingi ulikuwa mchafu. Uoshwe kwanza ndio wapike ndio wakule. Waokote uchafu wa ndani. Sio ule mchele wa first class. When I was a teenager, I have a part-time job when I was studying. Wakati alikuwa katika umri wakati alikuwa na nafasi ya kusoma na kuongeza masomo. And then I, when I had money I bought some clothing for myself. Eh mara nyingi angekuwa na pesa angeitisha vitu vyakula kwa maisha yake akule. And once in a while I found that my clothing was my clothes were gone was gone. Eh mara kwa mara alikuwa anapata nguo zake zimeraruka ama amezishinda. My father took what I bought and sold it so he has money to gamble. Mama mama ma, ma, baba mara nyingi alikuwa anatafuta nguo zile ambazo zimezishinda aziuze ili kwamba aende kucheza kamari. This is how I grew up. Hivyo ndivyo aliweza kukua. But God knows my heart. Mungu anajua moyo wangu. When I believe in Jesus. Wakati aliamini kwa Yesu. I want to tell people about Jesus. Nataka nizungumzie na kuambia watu kuhusu Kristo. And I also start to tithe. Nataka kila mara nitoe fungu la 10. And one time I work in a place and for two weeks I did not work. Na uh, wakati mwingine alienda mahali kwa wiki mbili hakufanya kazi. But they still gave me a, a paycheck. Lakini bado walimpa walimlipa. I took the paycheck back to them. Alichukua hii malipo akawarudishia kwa sisi. And I said, did not work for those two weeks. Akasema mimi sikufanya kazi kwa hizo wiki mbili. And I give the check back to you. Na akarejesha ile buli kwao. Because I'm a Christian. Kwa sababu mimi ni Mkristo. I don't want to take money that doesn't belong to me. Sitaki kuchukua pesa ambazo hazinihusu mimi. When people have a pure heart like that. Watu wakiwa na roho hiyo safi jinsi hiyo. God is happy with you. Mungu na anafuraha kwa ajili yako. And God gave me the opportunity to have a lot of chance to study. Mungu alinipa nafasi kubwa sana ya kuendelea na masomo yangu. Then I could go overseas and I have one bachelor degree and two master degree in theology. Ningeenda ningesoma kwenda ngambo nikapata juo nikapata degree na 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 certificate ya uzamili. All this did not come from my family or from my own money. Hii haikutokana na nguvu zangu na familia zangu ama kwa pesa zangu. It came from God's provision. Ilitoka katika mapenzi ya Mungu na kupeana kwa Mungu. Now let me ask you. Sasa nikuulize. Do you believe that God will provide for people who really love him? Wewe umeamini kwamba Mungu atapeana kwa wale watu ambao wamempenda? How many of you have experienced the special provision of God in your Asian hand? Ah, wangapi ambao wameamini kwamba Mungu yeye atawapatia na kwa wakati wote hebu inua mkono wako. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Everyone raise your hand. Ah, asante kila mtu ameinua mkono wake. So if God can provide you in the past, can you provide for you in the future? Kama Mungu amepeana kwa siku zilizopita, si anaweza kupeana kwa siku zinazokuja? You know I can never imagine I can do go to different countries to bless 
yeye hakuweza kufikiria kwamba angeweza kuwa mtu wa kutembea inchi moja mpaka nyingine. It's God provision. Ni Mungu ndiye amepeana. So I motivate people to serve. Na pinapitia watu moyo kufanya kazi ya Mungu. By saying that God is looking for people who really follow his heart. Na nikapokotia mbona kuambia kwamba Mungu anatafuta watu ambao wanatafuta moyo wake. Who have compassion to bless people. Ambao wana shauku ya kubariki wenzao. Who want to bless more people. Ambao wanataka kubariki watu wengi. Who have a pure heart. Ambao wana moyo ulio safi. And God will provide for them. Na Mungu atapeana kwa ajili yao. And God will open doors for them. Na atafungua milango kwa ajili yao. And God will give them spiritual gifts. Mungu atawapa vipawa za kiroho. And God will make it possible for them to serve God. Mungu ataifanya kuwa nyepesi kutumika katika kazi yake. When you hear this, umelia umeisikia haya. You have the motivation to serve God. Kuwa na moyo wa kufanya kazi ya Mungu. This is motivation by the grace of God. Hii ni neema kwa hii ni kutiwa moyo kwa neema ya Mungu. But the motivation is to Motivate you to obey God, to obey the law. Tunakutia moyo ili ukaweze kuti sheria. So I summarize by saying this. Na malizi yako kufanya kwa kusema hii. The motivation came from the love of God. Kutiwa moyo kwa toka katika pendo la kupenda mungu. And then the motivation tells you to obey God's law. Na kutiwa moyo kuna kutia changa moto ili uti sheria. Okay, say it with me. The motivation came from God's law. I love His love. Uh, anasema tuseme pamoja na, na nasi eh, kutiwa moyo kwa tokana na upendo sema hiyo and then the motivation is i mean God's love motivates us to obey God's law eh, mungu anatutia moyo kutii sheria so we obey the law so hivyo tunatii sheria Now let me say this too. The law does give us motivation too. Ah, uh, what I say is, Mungu anatuti anatuti amoyo hata sisi pia. But this is a secondary motivation. He dio kuti amoyo kwa kabi. Because the Bible says, Biblia sema, if we sow to the flesh, we will reap destruction. Ah, to ki to 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 ki to 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 ki panda kwa ubaya to tavuna mabaya. If we sin, there will be destruction. If we don't love our spouse, the family will be broken down. If we don't listen to the members of the church, then the church can break up. Tusikusikiliza maoni ya washirika wa kanisa, kanisa nitavunjika. If we are proud, we can break the ministry. Kama tutakuwa na kiburi, tutavunja huduma. And the worst destruction is a person can lose salvation. Na kitu uharibifu mkubwa sana ni mtu kupoteza uokovu. If a person commits serious sin and don't repent, kama mtu atafanya makosa alafu asitubu, he can lose salvation and go to hell. Anaweza kupoteza uokovu na anaenda jehanamu. So these are the motivation from the law. Hii ni kutiwa moyo kutoka kwa Mungu. But I don't tell myself every day. Mimi sisemi kwangu kila siku. If I don't serve God I can go to hell. Hata mimi nisipotumika nitaenda jehanamu. Hapana. My motivation is mainly from the love of God. Kutiwa moyo kwangu kwa toka katika pendo la Mungu. But I know that if I bury my talents. Na najua kwamba nikijenga talanta zangu. Like in Matthew 25 the one who buried the, buried the one talent. Ma Matthew 25 tunazungumza kwa yule mtu ambaye aliweka talanta yake moja chini na akazika. He was thrown in the outer darkness. Yeye alitupa katika giza. And for the ones who don't uh, Bless the little ones of Jesus. Na tunapowabariki hawa wachanga wa Kristo. That's the goats in the last parable in Matthew 25. Eh hiyo inapatikana katika Mathayo 25. And then they are thrown into eternal punishment. Hao nao usiku watiwa changa utatiwa katika adhabu ya milele. The Lord does give us warning. Mungu alitupa hii kama But if people serve God with a motivation, watu wanapohudumu katika kutiwa moyo, they will say, I have to serve God if I don't serve God I'll go to hell. Eh, nataka nitumike nisipotumika mimi nitaenda jehanamu. Aha. They are serving with fear. Wana 
tumika katika uoga. Now I want to say we're not saved by doing good, by, by serving God. Ah ah, hatutumiki kwa sababu tumefanya matendo mazuri ndipo tutumiki hapana. We are saved by faith, trust in Jesus as our Savior. Tumeokolewa kwa sababu Yesu Kristo ndiye mwokozi wetu. But when we have real faith that we want to obey God and love God and serve God. Tukiwa na imani kuu tutamtii Mungu, tutapenda Mungu na tutatumika. If people don't obey God and don't love God and don't serve God, there must there can be problem with their faith and they can lose salvation. Na kama watu hawatii Mungu, hawampendi Mungu, hawatumii kwa Mungu, huenda wakapoteza uokovu wao, na uokovu wao unaenda unaenda na unapungua na uwezi kuwa wa milele. So we don't get salvation by serving God. Hatuwezi kupata uokovu kwa kutumika. We get salvation by trusting in Jesus as our Savior. Tunapata uokovu kwa kuamini kwamba Kristo ndiye mwokozi. But the Bible does a warning. The people who don't serve God, they bury their talents, they could lose salvation. Na Biblia inatupa onyo hii kwamba wale watu ambao hawatumiki, hawatumizi power zao, uenda wasipoteze, uenda wapoteze wokovu wao ghafla pasipokujua. But there was because there was something wrong with the faith. Ni kwa sababu wako na shida moja katika imani yao. But that is the last motivation we want to use. Hiyo sasa ni kutiwa moyo kwa mwisho ambao tutataka kutoa. The main motivation is kikubwa cha kutiwa moyo ni hii. God loves us so much. Mungu anatupenda sana. He has all his blessings planned for us. Ah, hizi baraka zote kwa ajili yetu. A life can go higher when we follow him. Maisha yetu inaweza kwenda juu tunapomfuata. And when we follow him he blesses in every way. Tunapomfuata yeye anatubariki katika kila njia. And that is the best way to love ourselves. Hiyo ndio njia nzuri ya kujipenda wewe. To follow God's plan. Tukifuata mpango wa Mungu that you will feel better, right? So the motivation by the love of God give us motivation and give us joy to serve. Yani kutiwa moyo kwa upendo na Mungu kuna tupa moyo wa kutumika na kuwa na raha katika huduma. The motivation by the law sometimes is necessary. Kutiwa moyo katika sheria mara nyingi pengine ni kuzuri ndio. But it can give people negative feelings. Lakini ina wacha watu wakiwa na mawazo yaliyo kinyume. Like people say you don't pray so you don't get the blessings. Eh yani wanaambia watu usipoomba hakuna baraka. You don't pray so you don't God doesn't like you. Au uombi ndio sababu Mungu hakupendi. We don't want to motivate people like that. Hatutaki kutia watu moyo namna hiyo. Okay? Any question? Swali jamani kama lipo, swali kama lipo. Now, so I hope you don't mind. The assignment for this sasa sikiza mzuri haya sasa ndio nataka nikutume it doesn't have to be long yani nataka uandike unawatia watu moyo namna gani ili waombe ndio hiyo nasema hiyo ndio nimesema tu saa hii this is the answer Mungu ana baraka mingi kwa ajili yako. It's a wonderful plan for you. Ana mpango mzuri kwa ajili yako. So when we pray sincerely, usio tukiomba katika moyo ni wazi. He'll make the plan come true. Ataifanya mpango wako kupitia. He'll pour the blessings upon your life. Ata ata ajia baraka kwa ajili yako. And your life can go higher and higher. Na maisha yako yatasonga juu na juu zaidi. So that's the answer. Hiyo ni kitu jamani. So I just make sure you understand it. Ah hakikisha umeielewa. Okay. Any question about this? What I just told you is the motivation from the love of God and the more motivation from the law. What is the difference? You know. Yani ni jambo ambalo nimekwambia ni leo ni tofauti jinsi ya kutiwa moyo na pendo na kutiwa moyo na sheria. Tofauti iko. Okay? Any question? Swali. The is the distinction very important? Is it important? Aha, hii mambo si mazuri sana. Have you noticed many people use the law to motivate people? Au shall sasa ushaelewa kwamba watu wengi wanatumia sheria ili watie watu moyo. Yeah. They will say you have to do it. Do this. You have to do that. Lazima ufanye hii, lazima ufanye hii, lazima ufanye hii. You're lazy Christian. Wewe ni mdhaifu wewe ni obey God. Umseme kabisa lazima utii Mungu wewe hata usitii Mungu wewe. You're not doing good. Wewe hata ufanye mambo mazuri. So some people motivate people like that. Watu wanatia watu moyo kwa jinsi hiyo. But one 
We want more free people by the love of God. And also we appreciate what they do for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any question? Question. I, I mean, ask a while you might think of question you can ask. Ah, but he begin a you get one of these mics. Get one of these mics to let him ask. Are you asking the question? Amen. Kuna wengi ama the perfectness kwa mabasi yeah, there are people who, 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 who want to be perfect by putting on good garments attires, good attires ok, so what is what is he asking? <laughs> he is asking is it ok for somebody to please God by just putting on well dressing you mean good attires good dressing? Yeah, uh, good you, you're talking about physical dressing? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Clothing has nothing to do with the hearts. Ah. Because the heart is how you love God and how we love people. For me, I don't pay attention to clothing that much. Some pastors come from overseas, they probably are dressed up. Nothing wrong with that. I just like more casual clothing. Yeah, so it's... That has nothing to do with the heart. And the heart we can tell after a while, after when we watch, we, we live with this person for a while, we, we with this person, we stay with this person for a while, then we know the heart. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? The main thing is you understand what I talked about. Okay, there is a scenario whereby you are blessed, then we want to go before the Lord. Then, then the programmer said that if you cannot go before the Lord, it is better to be. So my question is, is it true that, that you can force somebody to pray? Ah, uh, kwamba kama wewe huwezi kwenda mbele ya Mungu, hii hebu ondoka katika mkutano. Sasa anauliza ni ni unaweza kulazimisha mtu kwenda mbele ya Mungu? Okay. Uh, tell me exactly what he said. Now, he's saying that he was in one of the meetings, eh? Then the the, the, the the programmer said that we well, let's go before the Lord. And if you don't want to go before the Lord, leave the meeting. So he's asking, is it proper to force somebody to go in the presence of the Lord? Uh, you mean he force everyone to come to the presence of God? Mm -hmm. To pray together? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that is it. That's what he did in one of the seminars. Okay. He was forced to do that. Okay. Now, I want to say this. It's true that Many leaders use the law to motivate people without knowing it. And it's very common. Basically, we all grow up in the law. Under the law. Under the law. When we, were, when we were young people tell us, if you're good, I like you, I love you, if not, I don't love you. Aha. And then when we grow up, people say, you know, okay, you're not good enough, we don't want you. 
Ah uh, wakati unakuwa unakuwa mzima hasa wanakuambia umekuwa sana hata sasa hatukupendi. When we do better, you do better than we we'll let you work here. Ah pardon. When we when you do better than we we'll let you work here in a place of work. Ah ukifanya vizuri sana tutakuleta katika kazi ya Mungu. Yeah, even in the ministry, katika hata katika huduma, it's you have to perform. Lazima wewe ukue na matunda. Now there's nothing more wrong with performing. Hakuna kitu kibaya ili yani kama mtu anakizalisha matunda si vibaya. It's the matter is how we motivate people. Na swali ni kwamba tumewatia watu moyo namna gani? For instance, co-workers are we encourage and say we can work together and serve God and God is happy with us and bless our ministry. Mm, tunaweza kusema tunaweza kutia mali yetu pamoja ili tuweze kuhudumu pamoja na kubariki huduma. Instead of saying you have to do this you have to do that if not you're not a good coworker. Aha, badala ya kusema kwamba lazima ufanye hii ufanye hii usipofanye hii hautakuwa huduma nzuri katika huduma hii. Now I don't want you to go around and ask look for people who use this the law much. Aha, sitaki uende waanze kutafuta na kuona watu wenye wanatumia sheria wengi waanze kuona hawa ni washiria hapana. Don't go to your pastor and say pastor you are you are using the law too much. Aha usiende kwa mchungaji waambie mchungaji wewe wamesema unatumianga sheria sana. Aha I am helping you as a person. Na kusaidia wewe kama mwanadamu mshirika. Now if your pastor listen to me and follow you know the use the love as a motivation is great. Eh mchungaji wako kama anaweza kunisikiza alafu aone nikitia moyo katika watu katika neema. But if he doesn't don't you know keep telling him things wrong. Ah asiposikiza usimchukulie hukumu ama makosa. So I would answer you that I for myself ningependa first people to pray ningependa kufanya jinsi ninavyofanya utie watu moja jinsi ya kuomba. Now say God loves us all. Na kusema Mungu anatumia sisi wote. When we pray together na kuomba pamoja. God is happy to bless us. Mungu akona furaha kutubariki. Let us open the heart. Na afungue moyo wao. And it received the blessing from God. Na upokee baraka kutoka kwa Mungu. So motivate with the grace of God. Ha, ni kutiwa moyo kwa neema ya Mungu. Now, for some people who don't obey, kwa wale watu ambao hawatii, persons in the church they are sinning, wanaendelea katika kutenda dhambi. Now, after using the love of God and then they don't follow and I will use the law of God too. Yaani kama hawafuati sheria za Mungu katika toba watageuka na kuanza kufuata sheria ili warekebishe damu. But I will say in a loving way. Nataka kusema hivi kwa upendo. You know, I have heard that you've done something like this. Nimesikia kwamba umetenda tendo hili ambalo ni Are you aware that this can bring destruction? Uko na hakika kwamba hili jambo linaweza kuleta shida. And if he says yes I'm I'm sorry for that. Na akisema ndio nimeona na nimnasikitika kwa ajili ya dhambi hii. Then I'll say well very wonderful that you are sorry for that and so we think of a way how you can change. Naweza kusema kwamba asante kwa sababu umeelewa jinsi makosa umeyofanya wacha tutafute njia jinsi tunavyoweza kubadilisha. But if the person doesn't listen. Kama mtu hawezi kusikia. And say I have to keep doing that. Ah mimi nitaendelea kufanya hivyo tu. And the yell of my husband and wife. Ha, mimi nitaendelea tu kuwa na mke na mume na tutaendelea kuishi kwa shangazi. To be angry with someone. Hata nitakasirika na mtu. Then I will give them warning. Eh, mimi nitampatia oyo. Then I will say, you know, do you know that you can uh cause damage to your, your relationship with God. Nitamuuliza kwamba unajua kwamba unaweza leta madhara katika uhusiano wako na Mungu katika ndoa yako. God can be very unhappy with you. Mungu hawezi kufurahishwa na hili jambo unalolifanya. But I want you to feel better. Lakini siwezi siwezi kufanya hili kidole kwa ajili yao hapana hapana. I I don't you I won't do that. Yeye hafanyi hivyo. So I say are you willing to come to God to repent? Aha, wewe atakuuliza, umekubali kurudia Mungu na utubu? If he doesn't repent, na kama hatatubu, then I will say, you know, you can come across God's anger. Na mtamwambia kwamba utakutana na ghadhabu ya Mungu. I'm I'm giving warning. Nitampa onyo. But the way I say it, I was I was still gentle. 
yani ile style ile 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 mbili nitatumia kupeana onyo itakuwa ni onyo kwa upendo okay okay na ni wakati umefika Okay, I hope we are all motivated by the love of God. Okay, let us conclude with a prayer. Dear Heavenly, let's set up. Tusimame kwa miku yetu. Thank you Jesus for loving us. Asante Yesu kwa kutupenda. You are right here with us. Uko hapa na sisi. You want to bless each one of us. Tunataka kubariki mmoja wetu. You care about each person. Na shughulika na kila mmoja. And you have a wonderful plan for our lives. Na mpango mzuri kwa ajili ya maisha yetu. And we can go higher and higher. Kwa sababu tuweza kwenda juu na juu. Thank you for your love. Asante kwa upendo wako. Lord, we want to enter your love. Baba, tunataka kuingia kwa upendo wako. We want to enter your wonderful plan. Tunataka kuingia katika mali pako safi. We want to be blessed by you. Ask us to a higher level. Mungu ni baba kwa kuwa ukipiga. Thank you Jesus. Asante kwa. We can enjoy you. Baba tu kuingia We can enjoy serving you. We can enjoy loving you. We can enjoy praying to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.